Happy Friday night here in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Lucy Gray, the co-founder of Global Actionable Innovations and the GLOW Conference. And um, we are still standing or sitting as it might be after running this conference for a number of hours. And we're so happy to have you with us if you're in this stage. Um, so welcome uh, to Alex Stewart, who is from Goodable. Hi, Alex. Hi, thank you for having me. We're great. We're so happy to have you here. And there's kind of a fun story behind this. Um, I like finding keynote speakers with a personal connection, or sometimes I just reach out to people and see if they'll they'll listen. <laughs> and um, I am a big Twitter fan, which um, I'm sticking with it as the Titanic goes down potentially. And uh, I started following Goodable in the last couple of years, I think, or it's actually only been years almost. So hasn't been that long. Um, and I really loved their messages of, of positivity in a climate, um, that in the US at least, that has not been um, so positive. And I found out that they were doing work with educators and providing resources for them. And Alex will tell us about that. And I thought, hey, they would be a perfect sponsor for teachers, um, or not sponsor, but part speaker for um, this conference, which I, I hope will reinvigorate and re-inspire teachers to think about innovation, to think about globally connected teaching and learning um, after really what's been a, a traumatic set of years for us. So um, without, for, I'm gonna go through a couple other slides here and then I'm gonna turn it over to Alex um, and I don't know if I can change the slides actually. So Alex, you're going to have to Thanks. So thanks to our partners. If you have not stopped by the expo hall and left your questions or asked for more information, that sort of thing, we would love for you to go visit, um, world savvy and Meg and educational collaborators and all of our friends who have made this part, this, this conference possible. It is um, a free conference because of our partners and we would love for you to connect with them. Next slide. Uh, so today, if there's anything that you want to share, we would love for you to be on social media. You can tag Goodable with it too, if you want to. Um, and I usually am a social media fanatic during these things, but it's the last thing I can do because <laughs> uh, with this conference, because I'm so tired right now. Um, but if you all are not so tired, we would love for you to tweet and share some of the great stories that you hear today and so on and so forth. Next slide. Everything is being recorded, um, just so you know, and we will publish the recordings as soon as we can. Uh, and you can come back and you can look at them in the replay section of the conference. Next slide. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna get off the screen and let Alex tell us all about Goodable. And I think this is the perfect way to end uh, the day with all this good news. So thanks Alex for, for um, listening to my tweet and uh, or heeding my tweet and <laughs> joining us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for the wonderful intro, appreciate it. All right, well, thank you for joining everybody. Um, before we dive into the real subject of what we're talking about today, I just really wanna quickly touch up on who I am and what Goodable is. Uh, so to start, my name is Alex. I'm head of business development here at Goodable. Uh, Goodable was a company founded by Muhammad Lila uh, in 2020, and originally uh, Muhammad was a war zone correspondent. And this meant he was spending time in various war zones, getting shot at, even held at gunpoint. And after years of reporting in all these different war zones and facing all this negative news, he made a choice. Instead of just covering the world's problems, he wanted to find a way to help solve them instead. It's on your screens, it's on your phones, it's everywhere, it's impossible to escape. He dove into some research. He found that 90% of news that we see every single day is negative. And he thought that there must be a way to turn this around. So he went back to CNN. He showed them the numbers and asked, what if there was a way to help people with news instead of making them miserable? And they loved the idea, but they wanted to keep Muhammad reporting on war zones. So we hopped on a plane, came home, and came home with a plan. And that plan was goodable. And today we reach an audience of around 61 million people every single month using news to improve their mental health. We have our content displayed on various notable buildings such as the Empire State and 30 Rockefeller. And we even launched an app and averaged around one download per minute. And because of all this, it's very obvious that there is a need for positive news. 
and people need a way to find it easily. So we use AI to find all the good news around the world, optimize it, and make it available for everybody on our app. And one day we hope it to take a step further and provide Goodable as a healthcare solution for mental health. Uh, but enough about us, let's dive right into it. Uh, not to start on a negative note, nah. <laughs> but everywhere you go, it seems anyone will express how negative that news feels. Turn on the news and here's what you'll see. You'll see earthquakes, floods, politics, and a daily dose of misery and anger. It's impossible to escape. It's obvious how negative the news is, but let's just take a little bit of a deeper look into what that actually looks like. Approximately 90% of all media news is driven by fear and negativity. And I'm sure you don't need statistics to tell you that almost all news is negative or driven by fear. Even more news is published in a way that is intended to provoke public interest and excitement at the expense of accuracy. And I'm sure we all remember what made up most of the news over the past few years. So yeah, I mean, news is negative, it's obvious, but what's the big deal and really why does it matter? Well, research in this area is fairly new, and at Goodable, we're on a mission to change that. But for now, Graham Davey, professor of the University of Sussex, said, too much exposure to bad news can make existing worries seem worse and even cause acute stress reactions and some symptoms of PTSD that could be quite long lasting. Cecil Ahrens, a clinical director of Transcend Therapy in San Diego, California, said we are evolutionary wired to screen for and anticipate danger, which is why we keep our fingers on the pulse of bad news and it may trick us into feeling more prepared. But Aaron says the feeling of fear, sadness, and anger triggered by negative headlines can keep people stuck in a pattern of frequent monitoring, leading to a worse mood and more anxious scrolling. And from a recent report almost as old as I am, from the British Report Journal of Psychology, negative news can cause a significant mood change, generating anxiety and depression. So we know most news is bad, and we know it isn't the greatest in the world for your mental health. But how does this translate to the classroom? Students have more and more access to news now more than ever. And whether it be TikTok, whether it be Reddit, whether it be Apple News, it's available at their fingertips at any time. Which is a good thing. I mean, the access we have to information today is one of the greatest feats of humanity. It's something that we shouldn't shy away from. And we can't just simply ignore the bad news. The bad news is out there. But here's the thing. We're currently ignoring the positive news. We're not seeing enough of it. And most of the daily dose of news that we have every single day is just very negative. But we can help balance that negative news consumption with positive news. The older generations will never be taken away from the traditional news outlets that can push 90% negative news and constant negative headlines. It's, you're right, Lucy, it's, it's draining. But we can start early and we can teach news to students at a very early stage without having them learn it themselves. It's something that needs direction and very easily you can end up off track with misinformation, negative headlines, and we know firsthand how that affects you. By bringing positive news into the classroom, we can show that positive news is out there. It's, it does exist. It's not disappearing. We can show that news can be inspiring, insightful, uplifting, and all the positive words that can go along with positive news as well. And bringing current events into the classroom has always been a benefit for the students involved. I know that when I was a student as well, it was one of the most engaging times that I ever had in school, whether it be elementary school or high school when the teacher was able to bring in current events from what's going on in the world, I felt more connected to the world and being able to see that vision and what's going on in those other places in the world gave me a reach of inspiration that I could actually see. And it's no secret. I mean, yeah, it's great for students. Current events are excellent for promoting critical thinking. Help your students understand an issue or event and then ask them to make inferences. Predict what might happen next and give their opinion on a topic and support it with evidence. Studying the news greatly increases students' background knowledge and depth of background knowledge is closely tied to academic success. The more background knowledge students have to draw from, the easier it is for them to make connections and grasp key concepts when they come across new information. And current events are a great way to get kids to look outside of themselves. Want, to, want your students to learn empathy? Have them read about some of the challenges others face in this world, and then help them plan and follow through on making a difference. You won't just be teaching them about current events. You'll be nurturing, caring, and compassionate leaders along the way. But bringing current events into the classroom is not always easy. And as teachers, I'm sure you're aware of that. Finding stories can be an absolute time sink, let alone ones that are appropriate for the class. And wading through violent stories or negative headlines to find a story suitable for your class can be absolutely draining. Even once the story is found, fostering discussions with those articles require well-thought-out questions that can spear curiosity. And creating those questions takes time. The teachers within our audience at Goodable started expressing how they use our platform to find these stories. And it makes sense. We have a 
platform that curates all the good news around the world that filters that for you and you can go find those stories and present to your class. And we kept seeing this use case more and more and more every single day. And it became evident that we wanted to take it a step further to see how we could help those teachers even more. So right away, what we came from was taking all these opinions and feedback that we got from our teacher readers and putting it into place. We had a lot of readers that were passionate about what we do, a lot of readers that really believed in the vision of what we do. And those readers, a lot of the times were teachers. We wanted to speak to them. So we set up one-on-one -on -one interviews, spoke to them and got their thoughts so that we can make a resource for them that would work as an add-on to what we already offer. And that's where Goodwill in the Classroom came into the picture. We spoke to teachers directly and asked what would help. How can we package our content in a way that will be useful for you and your classroom? We came up with a weekly collection of uplifting stories, each with printable classroom worksheet that can be used to guide students through the stories and foster discussion. And the best part is it's completely free and always will be free for teachers. So how does it work? Well, it's basically set up like an email. So every Monday you would get an email sent in your inbox every single morning before the class starts. And in that email will be five separate stories, one for each day of the week ahead. And for each of those stories comes with a short summary for each story and printable worksheet to download that you can share with your students. So every Monday is consistent with five new stories that you get. They're vetted by us, they're checked by us, they're good uplifting stories, inspiring stories, and often related to the classroom as well. And you get those stories, you can download the printable worksheets and share them with your class. So what does it look like? We have our Goodable in the Classroom worksheet right here on the right. So you can see how it's set up. We have the story summary on the right there, the picture on the top left, and questions to foster discussion on the bottom. This is an easy way just to print something off, pass it out to the entire class and have them read and review and give some opinions and talk about the questions that are on the page as well. Um, so this has been fantastic for teachers as a way to foster discussion and just have a resource available to have conversations every morning before things start. And you're right as well, a big part of this is media literacy. And that is something that our teachers have discussed with us as well. This is a fantastic way to be able to teach media literacy and show that news is out there and this is how you can consume it and this is the healthy way to do so. And now uh, we are in around 700 classrooms. So we launched around, around a month ago or so, we're already in around 700 classrooms and the feedback has been great. The teachers are loving it. Shayla Kelly, uh, grade seven, eight teacher said that she will be using this in the classroom for sure. I'm always apprehensive to use newspapers, websites because it's all so negative and violent. There's so much I can do with this. And it's true. I mean, wading through that stuff is just very draining for the teacher and the students if they're reading the stories as well. And we have Zakaya, a mental health counselor working at a school who's explaining that it's an invaluable resource for school teachers as well. So really good feedback from our teachers. We're on a path to iterate based on teacher feedback, feedback sorry, and uh, creating a product that is best fit for the teachers in our audience. Uh, we're keeping this free again to support teachers and help the next generation learn how to navigate their future news climate. And we're all exposed to news no matter what. It's up to us to ensure the content that we ingest is balanced, correct, and not negatively impacting our mental health, ensuring that the news that we are digesting on a daily basis is a healthy mix and not just constant negative news at all times. I know it's a little bit quick. Uh, I know it's a long day as well, so maybe that's a benefit, but we're already into the Q&A here. So I'd love to hear some questions. We have lots of time for questions and if this can even be a discussion, that'd be me even happier. So uh, happy to hear them. So one question that has popped up is, um, are these free self-learning uh, activities, um, can they be used to help students learn, uh, improve their English? Um, we have a lot of, um, teachers from around the world where uh, students are learning different languages are there, and, and I, and that actually makes me think, wonder, are, are these materials available in other languages? And I would think that this would be a really natural fit to get kids to read in, in English. If you're working on English skills. Um, Absolutely. Um, do you guys have the materials in Spanish or any other language out of curiosity yet? So we only have in English at the current moment. We're hoping to expand to other languages in the next few weeks or so. Um, but if this is something that we hear often and it seems to be the case, we're more than happy to provide that. Okay. And uh, you know, one of the core participants in creating Goodwill in the Classroom, his wife is actually a ASL teacher. Oh, um, so she expressed that as well. It's a great resource to be able to actually teach how to speak English, how to read English, how to write English at the same time as learning current events. And you know, I, just to say, my, my mom actually is a, uh, 
immigrant from France and she came to Canada with no ability to speak English whatsoever, like just no ability. And she learned how to speak English through shows and through crosswords. So you can imagine that, um, you know, there are different ways to approach this, right? And, you, and, and I think every teacher out there knows you want to make learning fun and enjoyable and a pleasurable thing to do so that uh, students will consume more um, reading materials. And I would think that if there are positive stories and fun stories like the ones I've seen come from um, from Goodable, that that would be just a natural fit. Um, are there any, the app is phenomenal. Um, if people have not seen it, I really love how you can rate and share and do all these things with the content in there and spread that, um, that joy that you're trying to, to, uh, you know, get across to people. Um, any plans for, well, here's what I, here's where I'd like to backtrack to for a minute, sure. because I think it's interesting, like how you started as the, as your founder's uh, dream working for CNN and you've only been going, what, how long has it been? Nine months, you said, you told me, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, well, Muhammad founded Goodable in 2020, but the majority of these strides okay. has been in the past year or so. Okay. So, like, I mean, this is, like, it's so interesting from a startup perspective, like, what I am also, I'm personally intrigued by by that, um, how you guys have have really taken off. I mean, you have over 300,000 followers, I think, on Twitter and that sort of thing. How... How has it been from a business perspective, um, experiencing this growth and, um, and I don't know, I would love to hear more just in general about, about your experience with that. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's been, it's been fantastic. And, you know, um, being able to work in a industry, uh, like good news, for example, and hearing back the feedback on how it affects our readers is definitely quite fulfilling. And, you know, we get a lot of kind messages every single day. And being able to tie that in a business sense has been fantastic in its own right. And, you know, our biggest mission every day is to reach ourselves to a point where we can prove that good news does have a positive mental health effect. And getting there is, of course, a process, but that's the mission, right? So if we can get to the point where, you know, we can show that good news is a positive benefit to your mental health and prevents X, Y, and Z, then that's where we want to be. Out of curiosity, are you working with any researchers on that to kind of quantify you know, the, the benefit to mental health, has anybody in quite been interested in working with you in that regard? We're actually in that process right now, as a matter of fact. So we're looking for researchers to connect with that would be interested in taking this on. Um, we are in the process of proving this on an internal side, but an external validation is of course very important. So if anyone has any connections for researchers that are interested, please, uh, please let me know. There are some higher ed folks in, in our, in our, in our ranks. So you never know, um, who's going to come forward and say something, you know, and randomly, um, what can, uh, what can our te as teachers, as educators here, what can we do to help your, help your cause? Since you've generously shared all your time with us this evening, what can we do? Um, down, I'm assuming download the app, um, uh, share the materials with friends and family. Is there anything else that we can do to be helpful to help you guys grow? Absolutely, you know, and I think the biggest thing is just meeting everybody. You know, I'm very available. Um, I'd love to connect with anyone to talk about absolutely anything. And the more I can talk with the community, the more I can connect with teachers, the more I can learn about what this product can actually be and how it can actually be useful to teachers, right? So I, I, we can create this product on our own vision and how we want to make it, but it's not for us, right? So the more I can speak with more people in the community, the better, and I'm more than happy to do so. And I believe my contact details should be available here as well. Okay. So the user experience is really is really key. So you're interested in talking to educators, and it's it's so funny in the ed tech world where I come from. Um, I think a lot of companies liked having teachers kind of beta test and uh, really delve into their products because they got a lot of feedback. You know, we're not shy as a group in general, <laughs> and um, and so we I think we are a good audience for trying out new things in general and, and, and giving feedback to companies like that. So, um, so hopefully everybody here will, uh, will get into this and uh, try it and see um, what's your favorite. Uh, oh, here's a great question from, uh, from Laura. Um, 
What's your vetting process? Yeah, so Goodable has been founded by journalists and uh, that's a big core of what we do. So although we use AI and ML to find the stories and curate the stories and optimize the stories for our platform, we still have a team of journalists actually vetting those stories, making sure that whatever we're putting out there is accurate, is what it says it is, and doesn't have any misinformation and everything related to that. Um, when it comes to the vetting for making sure it's good news, uh, our AI usually takes care of that. It assigns a happiness score to the story to tell us how happy the story actually is. Then we go check it out again as the reporters check it out to make sure that everything's correct and vetted. Uh, excellent. Thank you, uh, Laura, for that question. Um, the other thing I, I was thinking about is, um, so let's talk social media. Um, what platforms are you on? social media wise, you have the app, you're on Twitter. Are there other channels that you that you guys are on yet? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, dealing with the whole Twitter controversy, of course, we're on Mastodon now as well. Okay. So in case Twitter somehow it explodes or doesn't exist tomorrow, you can find us on Mastodon. Okay. And that's uh, a, new, a new Twitter clone, basically. It's been around for a while, but taking popularity now for obvious reasons, of course. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, we're on TikTok and Instagram as well. Um, so feel free to check us out there. We post some pretty great videos on TikTok that you'd enjoy. And okay. then lastly, we're on Snapchat as well. Okay. So uh, I need, I still have not gotten into Snapchat and TikTok. I know I'm behind. I need, I need to get with it. Um, and I did get a Mastodon account um, when I heard people first talking about it a couple weeks ago. And uh, it was, it's, I don't know what to think of it. I was not wildly impressed, but um, you know, I'm, I love Twitter. I've learned to use Twitter, uh, to my advantage. And, and, you know, speaking of news, um, the way I used it when all the craziness, the real craziness started around, uh, you know, here in the U S um, I, I love tweet deck and I use, and I make lists. So um, I would, I would kind of curate people that I wanted to follow closely as opposed to the 5 million other people on Twitter. And, and it became a really valuable news source for me in terms of finding people who were close to issues, who had different kinds of insights into things. Um, and so those lists have been really valuable in educating me about um, the not so positive news, but like how our democracy works and how our legal system works and how you know, everything works. Um, and so, you know, if people are on social media and, 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 and some people are always negative about social media, they're like, oh, especially now. And I don't think it has to be that way. I think you have con some control over your, your feed and what goes into it. And so my point being, it's not really a question. It's really just my point, um, is, you know, it curate your own, it, it, it helps to use the tools that are available, like in Twitter, like lists to, to, to manage the kinds of social media that come your way and that sort of thing. So if you're not into that sort of thing yet, people, uh, friends, you may want to like dig into it. So for example, I could put Goodable on a list and some of my favorite art, you know, sources or educator for, uh, you know, educator resources. And then there's a, you know, I can kind of closely track that stuff more than just following 5 million people randomly. So, um, but if Twitter doesn't exist tomorrow, then I guess we don't have that. So <laughs> uh, I'll have to dive into another social media uh, thing. Um, any, so in terms of the technology, in terms of the AI piece, how do you, how does it, how does that work a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit more about the tech part of it? Like about how does AI curate and, and is it, um, and what are the sources that are, are coming from there before, you know, before your journalists make sure everything are, is up to your standards? For sure. Definitely. So I, I, the technical person is not here, so I don't have a tech background in this exact realm. So I can't provide like solid concrete explanation just yet, but for our sources, yeah, our sources are over, I believe a hundred different sources. So we have different sources like CNN and the global news and routers and different sources from all over the globe, all over the world, really. Um, then our AI will scan and crawl uh, those articles to find different keywords that represent a positive article, for example. And then those will funnel themselves into our backend. And then through our backend, we're able to see them, see their happiness rating, take a deep dive into what the article actually is, and then give a green light on the ones that we actually want to feature. And mm -hmm. then from there, we use an AI called GPT-3. 
And I'm sure some of you might be aware of it from different tools like copy.ai, for example, or jasper.ai, yeah. various blog, right? Exactly, right? So they use GPT-3 to um, some level, some form of it uh, to basically optimize articles or write articles and summarize them into smaller uh, summaries as well. So it's a bit of a mix of both there. Okay. Um, again, our CTO could give a much better explanation. Yeah, for that. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm working on a project for a, a startup that's related to... Um, news that news but not necessarily it's more kind of i don't know election it's not it's not election news but it's news that will help people make informed decisions about their voting choices and that sort of thing their, their policy oh, on things and so um i don't know anything about the technical side of it i'm just the, an, edu an education curator for them um but it's just it's just interesting that this is this is coming up this kind of um we need this because there's such a glut of information out there um how do we curate and find the best stuff um ken morrison has a really great point so he said i'm going to put this his comment up here because i think this is important um uh it, one feature that would be really great for teachers in the app is or anywhere is having um, a Lexile number or some sort of reading level assigned to, to the material because that way they could um, quickly find articles that could be applied, you know, that could, they could use with their students. Um, so that's, that's a really great idea, Ken. Thank you. Thank for you, Ken. That. That's fantastic. Um, it, there's a, there's, a, a there's an ed tech service that you might want to look at. Uh, that's a pay for service for, um, for teachers called Newzella. Or some people yeah. call it News ELA. I always call it Newzella. I maybe I'm saying it wrong, um, but it's 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 some stuff is free. Some stuff schools pay a subscription for, and it's all leveled at at students' reading level, so that you can find something that's appropriate for that. So that okay, gotcha. something that's useful to you. Um, and then Jenna has another question here, um, and I have no idea what this means. She's uh, are you guys working from data lakes? I don't know what a data lake is. Sorry. Yeah, so great question, Jenna. But again, for me, um, I can very briefly or vaguely answer the question, but not with enough confidence that our CTO could. But if you can connect afterwards, I can let you know. I'm happy to. Okay, and then I have another question for you while I'm thinking about it. What's your favorite story? I don't have, here's my phone. I'm going to look it up right now. What's your favorite story that you've come across in Goodable that really oh. like, you smile? Or do you have a couple favorites? I mean, there's, there's so many, you know, I mean, we have, we have two different times, right? We have viral videos and more news like stories and, you know, some of the viral videos are just, uh, they're fantastic. Right. I mean, we had one where a, um, a little girl was in a cruise ship and there was a person playing a piano and her father, I guess, is an, an opera singer, but you would never guess it. By I saw this up, one. Right? Yeah. I right. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was just so funny. You I mean, know where like, it was? Uh, I know. I recognized it. Oh, really? I'm, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that was at the Grand Floridian in Walt Disney World, which is like their fancy, their, their fanciest hotel in Walt Disney World. And okay. I think it's in the lobby. And I, I stayed there in my honeymoon. <laughs> I went to Walt Disney World on my honeymoon. So awesome. I'm pretty sure that's why I recognized it. I think. I don't think it was a cruise ship. I think it was the lobby of this hotel, but I could be wrong. Okay, I, fair enough. I did I did see that one. So um okay. Any other ones that you're partial to? Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a few, right? So, I mean, anything that involves John Cena or Dolly Parton has been a big one for me, for sure. And those stories just go crazy, too. But, um, you know, we, we feature them quite often. And they're actually, oh, sorry, John Cena is actually a follower of ours. So it's kind of funny to be able to feature stories of him. Hopefully he's seeing it. You never know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, anything in that realm is uh, is always good for me. Yeah. And I, I'm always looking for something to share that's not negative and, and, you know, it, you know, I want, I don't want to be a negative Nelly in my timeline all the time. So this is, it's, it's a great resource. And um, how do, how do you, um, uh, how, so do you have, so you must have a ranking of like your all time, like most popular stories um, in general. Is that the happiness rating or is that the, is there, I'm looking at the, how would I, I, I what, what are, do you know what the most popular stories of all time have been on Goodable so far? Yeah. Well, you, you know, it's, it's hard to really boil it down to any one story or, you know, any specific story, but again, I mean, I hate to be repetitive here, but I mean, like, it, I, 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 I got to stress it, you know, anything with John Cena or Dolly Parton is gone. 
extremely viral, like very popular. And, you know, exactly. even even Jenna, Jenna's saying in the chat right now, you know, loved all. I mean, who doesn't, right? So yeah. Even, yeah. even the younger generation we're finding is still clicking on these stories and is still aware of who Dolly Parton is. And, yeah. you know, I'm quite young myself. So me, for me to say the younger generation, for that to yeah. still stay true, is saying something in its own right, you know. But uh, was, yeah, yeah, John Cena, Dolly Parton, for sure. Well, now that you bring up age, um, I was thinking of something It is a comment to our audience. And um you know, when I started in this business back in 1908 or whatever it was, um, I, we, we, uh, we, you know, we talked about the future for our students and what we, what we dreamt for them. And um, we wanted our students to be future ready and prepared to, um, you know, work, you know, in any kind of profession or, or not any kind of profession, but be able to make shifts in, in how and where they worked and that sort of thing, because, the world was changing. That was kind of the theme 15, 20 years ago, uh, maybe longer now. I'm, 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 I'm probably longer. And, and it occurred to me a couple of years ago, looking at um, John and Hank Green, uh, you know, John uh, Green, the, the, the young adult author or young, uh, young adult literature author and his brother, Hank Green, who's a, who does SciShow on um, YouTube and started VidCon. Um, that that was those were the those are the young people who were the students that we were hoping you know our the students that we had are now grown up and are actually leading entrepreneurial kinds of lives being able to do all sorts of different things in this world cool. um i'm trying to think if there's somebody else another person that i think is really impressive too in this is is joseph gordon levitt who has and i haven't looked at his website in a long time but he has this um, arts community that's a collaborative space online where you, you know, photographers and writers and videographers can all like collaborate on different works. And some of the things have actually been produced for money and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but it's so, it's so much fun. I just want to say, Alex, to see, you know, people that could have been our students um, who are now of age to be showing us a few things and, um, and so, you know, youth is not wasted on the young, I don't think, um, in this case. And and we appreciate all of the, you know, you showing us the way here. Um, so we may be um, seasoned, but we, we're excited to keep on learning and excited to keep on um, sharing with others. Uh, anybody else? That's my little, that's my little lecture for the evening um, <laughs> um but we're, we're so excited to have you here and it's it's impressive um what you guys have done uh anybody else have a final question or, or anything for alex before we all call it a night and go have a glass of wine or beer or whatever we do on friday nights um i'm looking and seeing if anybody has anything to say Okay. Uh, Jenna has one more question. Do you know, uh, uh, do you all know Impact Guild? What's Impact Guild, Jenna? No, I'm not. I'm not sure who Impact Guild is. And so Jenna used to work at uh, Intel, she says. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's a group of mostly millennials. I've lost track of who belongs in what group. Sorry. Well, thank you, Jenna. This actually looks great. And, you know, we're always looking for different partners, people who are also doing good in the world. So this is uh, very helpful for us. Thank you. Okay. Who are bringing cre creatives together to create effective change. So it, this is so interesting to me, especially in the previous session with, with Terry taking students to COP27. And, um, you know, the, you know it's, it, it seems like your generation is poised to really make a positive difference and they're not waiting for us to get out of the way. And that's great. So yeah, it's uh, exciting, you know? let us know, you know, anytime if there's anything that we can do for you as an education community, if we want, if you want us to connect you with more educators or uh, be part of a beta test or, you know, give you feedback. Um, we've got a really lovely community who's willing to, um, to share and to get to do that sort of thing. So without further ado, I am going to go through our final slides, I think. I don't know if you have, do you have yours in here? Your final, the final slides, or I can pull yeah, them Yeah, I do. I can switch it over. Just give me okay. one moment here. Okay. And you know, again, thank you to everybody for the uh, warm welcome here. It's been, uh, it's been great speaking with everybody and uh, you know, it's been fantastic. We'll have the recording up soon and I'll, I'll send you a link to it too, Alex, at some point. Perfect. Um, our session recordings can be found in the replay tab on the left-hand side of the hop-in window 
throughout this conference. I just published a bunch of them. Um, it's easy for me to publish, by the way, the ones that are on the stage because there's one recording. Uh, but in the sessions, there's lots of recordings because people, every time you go in a room, it starts recording. So it's going to take me a little while to weed through the session recordings and publish them, just FYI. Um, but the ones that we are um, that are ready to go that we've we're, we've cleared um, will be published as soon as we can we can do that. Our keynotes will also be published up on YouTube, um, hopefully within the next week. And we also would love to have your feedback about this session and any other session that you've attended. Please use this QR code or this link and give us some quick thoughts on what you thought. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And so I think that's it. Nope. We have one that's more right. thing. We have our primary community is actionableinnovations.com. Uh, or actionableinnovations.global. And we would love for you to join that community and stay connected and share your work throughout the year, not just at the conference in that space. So uh, let's all give a hand to Alex and thank him thank for you. his time. And um, I hope you guys follow Goodable and download the app and get the teaching resources. Absolutely. And uh, just to, I think, see Jella, Jenna, sorry, said that, how to stay in touch with you. Um, feel free to reach me out on Twitter, uh, Alex R.R. Stew. Also LinkedIn in case Twitter explodes again. And you can follow Goodable at, at Goodable on Twitter as well. Yeah. So I'm and happy I, to chat to anyone anytime. Yeah. If you I'll throw, uh, I can throw your LinkedIn in the chat because I have it right here. And he's also in the conference community as well, too. So yep. if you send him a message there, he's going to get that as well. But here's his LinkedIn. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, Thank next. You keynote is going to be 6 a.m. Central Time tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a little quieter here, but there are still some sessions going on. Uh, and we hope that you'll join in at the top of the hour. Um, thanks a lot for coming and we'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.